Conference opener against Florida Atlantic. Um, it's a 6 p.m. start, and it will be broadcast on ESPN3. So to get things started, I'd like to bring up head coach Rick Stocksteel. Uh, start out, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, like Mark said, it's our opening uh, conference game. We're really excited about it. Florida Atlantic is, uh, they're coming off a win last week, and it's a uh, much different team uh, than we've seen the last couple years, both schematically and from an athleticism standpoint. Uh, they've changed from, uh, defensively, they've gone from a 3-4 defense to a 4-3, uh, and playing a lot of uh, man coverage. They come after you, they're pressuring, they're blitzing more than what they've done in the past. And then offensively, you know, they've got now the traditional pro set offense um, where they've been uh, ha had a tight end in there, you know, 90% of the time and a two back set. Uh, now they've gone to the spread where they're four wide shotgun. They're not running the quarterback as much uh, as some spread teams do, but uh, you know, so they've opened up their offense a little bit here. The kicking game, they've got a, uh, a young kicker. They've got a freshman kicker, and, um, you know, looks like he's got a pretty good leg. Uh, they've changed some things up schematically also in the kicking game uh, with what, how they're protecting and how they're covering on their, on their kicking game. So, uh, and then athleticism-wise, uh, they've added a, you know, a handful of junior college guys to both sides of the ball that have really enhanced their athleticism. Uh, they've got seven, restart, seven returning starters on both sides of the ball. So uh, it's a team that's got some experience, and they've really added to it with the junior college uh, people that uh, they signed this past year. So, But, again, we're looking forward to it. And, again, it's as much about uh, us and us getting better. I thought we did some good things in that first game. Uh, we did enough things uh, that we've got to get corrected and improve on to uh, give us a chance this week. But. Appreciate you being here, and I'll open it up to questions. <clears throat> Coach, uh, with the scheme changes FAU has, does there, I know they brought in some new junior college guys, but is their personnel, what, I mean, do they have a 3-4 personnel or a 4-3 personnel? Do they have the personnel to fill those new schemes? It looks like it does on film, and, and uh, you know, they had – you know, they, they got a senior def defense. They've got an older front in the defense. So uh, I think they do. Uh, you know, they played a lot of uh, nickel defense in the secondary last week. Uh, you know, so they were playing. A, they may have moved. I think they moved a linebacker that played linebacker against us last year. I think they moved him to the front to a defensive end position. And now they're using, you know, a lot of nickel personnel in the secondary. So uh, I think they do. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, they were handicapped in any way personnel-wise. So in the past, they've kind of been the oddball in terms of schemes in the conference. They didn't do spread stuff. Their defensive scheme was different. Do they look more similar to the other teams in the Sun Belt now? Well, from, from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, they do. You know, they're, they were probably, you know, 90% in the shotgun last week. Uh, you know, they're four wides. Uh, you know, they've got – they had a receiver that couldn't play last year. They've got him back now. They've added a couple new guys in there that are helping them. So, um, you know, from a personnel standpoint, Adam, I think they've got everything they need to, to be effective in their schemes that they're doing. They had some trouble, obviously, in their opener. What does that – how much of an indicator of what they have is what you show in the opener? I'm, I'm sure you guys would hope to be a better team a month from now. How do you judge a team off that one game? Well, you know, you, that, that's all you have to, to judge. But uh, they've got they've – got, to me, they're a faster team on both offense and defense than what they were the last couple years. So uh, you can see that that's obvious uh, that you can evaluate that off one game. You know, they turned the ball over, uh, I think, four times. Uh, you know, they had a drive uh, right there at the end of the game that they fumbled on the two-yard line going in that could have had another touchdown. Uh, they had another drive stopped earlier in the game inside the 10 where they had a turnover. So 
Uh, I think turnovers hurt them, obviously, in that first game. Uh, they had a, a kicking mishap. You know, they re fielded a kickoff and ended up going out of bounds on the two or three yard line. So they, they had enough first game mistakes that I'm sure they'll get corrected also this week. When you look at, at <clears throat> this game, you had chances to go up early this past game, to go up early 10 nothing, 14 nothing, whatever. Um, is there something missing in there where you can play well, but there's something missing there of that, that killer instinct, that go and just beat a team when you have opportunities? I don't think so. I don't think it's that. I mean, we um, – this sounds – we were – we weren't trying to kick a field goal. We were trying to score. You know, the first touchdown or the first time down there, we had a run through on the linebacker. We had we missed a block, and you know it's uh, you know you hate to say it, but sometimes that's going to happen. We've got to get it corrected. Uh, I don't think that had anything to do with us not trying to to step on your throat and put it you know put it out because you got to play 60 minutes. But um, now we we just had to me, Adam. It's an execution part offensively when we didn't do well it was mainly because of execution we didn't uh, you know the second time down there was the same thing um, we got down there we didn't execute we didn't uh, we had another uh, miss block we had a uh, I think we had a penalty, I think, down there on that side. Somehow we got behind the chains a little bit there on the second one. But uh, to me, we just it, it's about execution and us taking control, controlling what we can control down there. And, and on defense, you talked about missed tackles. Uh, what can you do in practice to make a difference between week one and week two in execution on offense and tackling on defense? Well, you know, I think it's – you know, we've been practicing for four weeks, and this will be our fifth week. So uh, you hopefully you get better each day you go out there and practice. That's the goal is to improve each day. And uh, yesterday was a, was a really physical practice. Uh, spent a lot of time tackling, full-speed tackle, you know, full-speed thud, button up, uh, you know, the defense against the scouts and the defense against our offense. So... Uh, there was a lot of competition out there between the two teams, offense and defense, uh, and hopefully that'll enhance and, and improve our uh, execution on offense as well as defense. Do you know Coach Pelini or anybody on their staff? Mm, I don't. Not well. We haven't. No, I, I don't know. I don't think they kept anybody off last year's staff. Uh, you know, not having media guides, uh, you don't. Uh, you don't really know who's down there anymore, to be honest with you, but uh, I don't know Carl. If, if you had to pick out a silver lining there that first game, special teams really good in returns, made both kicks, punt yeah, team looked good. I, I, thought, I thought we executed really well in the kicking game other than the one, you know, screw up on their shank punt where it, it hit our guy and ultimately it cost us a possession, it cost us possession at, you know, great field position at midfield and, Ultimately, it cost us seven points because they went in on that drive and scored. So uh, that one play kind of overshadows, in my opinion, everything that we did good in the kicking game. When you look, <clears throat> you, you talk about this new start everybody does to a season for the whole offseason. You got that new start to the season. Do you make that same uh, decree there about the conference schedule. You win this game, you could be in first place for a month. Do you tell your team that? No, they, they know that. They know how important this first game is. We didn't, we didn't win last week. We didn't, uh, we didn't play well enough to win. Uh, it's disappointing, uh, but it's one game, and, I, and I'm not going to – we're not as a team. We're not going to uh, pack it in, and uh, we, there's still a lot to play for. We still have, you know, every goal out there to accomplish other than going undefeated. So – um, you know, well that, that's our goal. And our, our goal is to, to, to win this conference, and it's got to start this week with, uh, you know, your first conference game. Is there more of an urgency because this is conference? Because th this is an early, early conference game, so you kind of have to get your ducks in a row, so to speak. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's early, but, again, uh, the conference won't be decided next week or this weekend. You know, so uh, we just – we're uh, – we're looking more I'm, – I'm not looking at the big picture right now. I don't want to look at, you know, 
this is one game. This is one conference game. We've got a bunch more after this. So we just have to take care and focus this week and control what we can control uh, and get better individually and collectively as a team and then try to improve on the mistakes that we made last Thursday. Uh, of course, last week in FAU's victory, they changed quarterbacks at halftime, and, that, uh, and they went with the senior, and, of course, he led them to the victory. And, of course, yesterday, listened to the teleconference, the coach on the teleconference, he talked about the senior, uh, Graham Wilbert's most likely going to get to start this week. Any different, any different in terms of how you prepare for him, knowing that they just made a quarterback change, or he's still preparing for both quarterbacks? Well, uh, they don't do anything different. It's not like they have this offense – you know, for number 10 and this offense for number 14. So, uh, you know, Graham played against us last year. He played, I think, every game last year except one. Uh, he's a good player. He's a, he's a big guy. He can, uh, he can throw the ball. He's got a good arm. Uh, he makes all the throws for him. He's not going to uh, – I don't see either one of those quarterbacks. They don't ask him to run the ball a bunch. So, uh, but they do run it. They ran some quarterback draws and everything with them. So they're not afraid to run them, but they're not going to win the game. Uh, they don't want to win the game with him running the football. So uh, his, their number one dry, job is to drive the offense and, and you know, throw it to um, you know, the, the, whoever they got in the passing game. Is, uh, uh, but now we'll, we'll prepare just we'll, – we're pre preparing for Graham to be the starter. Uh, it's – you know, they put him in there at halftime, and he did a nice job in the second half. But they're both very similar. They're both, uh, you know, prototype NFL-type quarterbacks. They're big, tall guys. No yes. I appreciate it. All right, uh, it's now time for our student-athlete uh, quarterback, Logan Kilgore. Logan, uh, talk about the mindset of the team heading into the conference opener this week. Um, I think that, uh, you know, everybody knows it's start a conference and um, everybody's excited to, to, uh, to start that. Um, I think that, you know, like Coach was saying, it's, it's another game on the schedule and I'm really excited to, uh, to get out there and play. How important is it going to be, kind of like what Coach said, um, you, and you're not really looking at the big picture yet, but you also want to – start off 1-0 in the conference and kind of get the momentum going and that type of thing. How important is this game in terms of building momentum for the rest of the conference season? I think it's, uh, it's very important. I think that, um, you know, we want to get out and get off to a good start in conference. Um, you know, although I think we're the only conference game this week, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but all we're focused about is, is FAU, and, uh, and I think that, um, you know, winning will take care of itself. And I think, you know, as long as we just prepare and, and do the things that we have to do, um, yeah, it'll be nice to, to be 1-0. and and, um, But we know that this game's not going to decide who goes to what bowl or anything like that. You know, we just we want to come out here and, and, uh, and, and play a good game from start to finish and, and um, you know, start the conference out well. Logan, is it hard not to look at the big picture when there's so much build up to that first game? coming off of last year, is it hard to just say, no, no, just this game, nothing in the past, nothing in the future? Is, is that difficult? Um, not really. You know, Coach Stock, um, you know, he preaches win the day all the time. And uh, I think that, you know, especially my position, um, you, you know, you got you to gotta crawl before you walk and walk before you run. I think that, you know, just kind of looking at what FAU does on early downs or what FAU is doing, now, you know, like – Coach said it's a different defense. Um, it's kind of, you know, Wagner was a multiple set offense, and it was kind of, you know, you get some looks, but, you know, it'll, it'll take some adjusting. And I think that um, I'm just worried about FAU this week. Um, haven't really paid much attention to, to any other games or, um, you know, and can't change anything in the past, so I'm not really worried about that either. After the game the other night, we saw coming out of there guys with tears in their eyes, especially some of the older players. Is it important for that one to hurt that bad, or is it, or, or should it not hurt as much because you want to put it in the past? How, how do you approach a loss like that? No, absolutely. I mean, you know, you can really tell 
how much people put into this by their reactions when things don't go their way. You know, it's like um, if if somebody was like, you know, oh well, we got to put it behind us. You can't change it now. You know, something like that. It, it wouldn't really it wouldn't really feel um, as great when you win if it didn't hurt as bad as it does when you lose. And I think that that's pretty much what you saw. You know, you, we got guys on the team giving everything that they got um, day in and day out. The the hours that we spend, you know, in the weight room, in the meeting rooms, everything else, it, it, it comes together. And football's so different from any other sport. You know, you only have these 12 opportunities guaranteed. And, you know, you work year round and uh, it all comes together. And, you know, you could look at that game the other night and pick out four plays, you know, and, and it, it it's too bad. But really your whole year's work of, you know, hard work and everything comes down to a couple plays and, and they can be dissected and I think that's pretty much what uh what we're, you know translates to to the emotions and stuff that you see after a loss is there if you win a game does all this turn around does all the when we talk about just two plays here one play there you win one game do you think that all changes I mean really it's just <laughs> two or three plays you know four plays something like that and and uh and you know I'm still going to stand here and say that FAU was on my mind and that you know I was going to worry about being 1-0 and in conference and non-conference game. Yeah, it was great to be 1-0, and but, you know, it, I think that either way, you know, this week, going to put forth our best effort. We're, we had a great practice yesterday, and I think we're going to have another great one today. And, um, you know, just prepare every day to, um, to, try, to try to gain that confidence and, and get in there and, um, you know, be 1-1. The the passing game of the night, you did a whole lot of the wide receiver screens, which I know is a big part of y'all's offense. But it looked like there just wasn't much downfield. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the longest completion was 17 yards. Is that something that you guys are going to have to force, or is it just going to have to come? What's going to change that to get something downfield? I mean, you know, the 17-yard completion was on a screen pass. And um, I, I, I think that as long as we're moving the chains, um, you know, whether it's our offense, anybody's offense, if you gain four yards every down, you're unstoppable. You know, if you – First down, get four. Second down, get four. And third down, get four. You'll never be stopped. So, I mean, I'm not really worried about um, – I think McNeese did a really good job um, keeping everything in front of them. And I think that was probably one of their uh, their main, you know, missions. And it's just, a, you know, if I was out there forcing balls and stuff like that, then I wouldn't be putting our team in a chance to win. I think that uh, just taking what they gave us, um, we have those threats. And I feel like um, with time we'll be able to – um, to, to use them, but the other night I felt like um, I felt offensively we we were very efficient. Um, you know, uh, anytime you have a 20 play drive, you know, to go down and score, um, you know, that's pretty impressive. Especially starting on I think the three yard line, something like that. You know, something like that takes a lot of focus and a lot of you know diligence by everybody on the field. But um, you know, obviously we would have wanted to uh, turn those field goals into touchdowns. But like Coach was saying, it's you know, one guy here, one guy there away from, from being a huge night. So um, I'm excited. I, I think that uh, everybody else should be excited about the amount of talent and the amount of weapons that we have out there. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, making sure that everybody's doing the, the right thing on every single play. Do you kind of feel like defensively most teams are going to approach you that way that make you dink and dunk down the field and just hope they can slow you down by the time you get in the red zone? No, I think that um, – you know, I, th I think McNeese did a really good job of um, of recognizing some of our strengths. Um, I think that you know, last year, being a sophomore quarterback, people felt like they could attack us a lot, and um, and I think that you know, this year, they kind of sat back and and you know, just just let us have some underneath stuff. But um, I feel like you know, especially going into conference play and things like that, I expect a lot of people to come after us. Um, be a lot more aggressive and uh, you know with that um, you know percentages may be down but um, you know maybe some more big plays but uh, I think that every every snap we're just going to do as an offense what we're uh, taught to do you know we're going to we're going to run the the plays that they're giving us and and do it um, do what it takes to score I think that long drives will probably be um, you know I'll take that over a one play drive any day. There's not a, a desire there to maybe get a little pressure so that you can you can throw one deep so you can get better numbers. I think it's just taking advantage of opportunities. You know, I'm not saying that you know McNeese didn't blitz. I just think that um, they just you know sat back a little bit more often than not. But um, I think that uh, 
you know, anytime somebody's, you know, going to play us one way or the other, we got to be ready for both situations. And I think, uh, you know, going against our defense in practice, the amount of movement and stuff that they give us um, puts us in a good position for that. And I think that, uh, you know, as long as we keep adjusting and, and doing the things that we're doing, um, we have the weapons to, to take advantage. Anybody else? Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, one other uh, a reminder, this is our Hall of Fame weekend, and so our induction ceremony will be uh, Saturday at 3 o'clock right here on the, the lawn of the Hall of Fame. So, again, 6 o'clock start on uh, Saturday, um, and we'll be back here again next week at the same time uh, as the Blue Raiders prepare for Memphis. Thank you.